Larry, welcome here, my dear friend. Welcome uh, back from your uh, from your trip. We have a lot to uh, talk about: the EU elections, the coming French elections, the UK elections, the problems with the government in Israel. But everybody wants to know about your trip, and certainly I do. I <laughs> deeply regret that I wasn't with you, but those were circumstances beyond uh, my control. Tell us first your impression of the Russian people and the commercial activity and St. Petersburg uh, as a city uh, that you viewed in the week you were there. Uh, just, it's just magnificent. People, city, everything. You know, what's interesting uh, is that over the weekend, they finally, the World Bank finally confirmed that uh, Russia's the fourth largest economy in the world, measured by in terms of gross domestic product, and with what they call purchasing power parity. And um, I just read an email this morning from a, from an acquaintance uh, who has said, oh, Russia is terrible. I was there a few years ago. Those people don't have the kind, kind of standard of living in the United States that we do. And you know what? He's right. Because in Russia and St. Petersburg, a woman can walk the streets at 1130 at night and not have to worry about being raped or mugged. You can get on the subways there and you're not chasing off rats. You can go to stores and they got they got every item you can imagine available for purchase, but you're paying, you know, probably 40 percent less than you would in the United States. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Some of the stupid perceptions in the West and our arrogance because it used to be true. You could go to Moscow or St. Petersburg and the shelves were bare and people were not able to buy. That's no longer the case. It's a thriving, vibrant economy. But best of all are the people. And, and, and this is what really, I think, sort of sets them apart. It, it, it is, they're, like the, they're like the folks in the Midwest where I grew up. Uh, they're very welcoming. That they separate. They don't judge you because you're an American. That you got Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer and 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 um, Mitch McConnell as your representatives. They judge you by you as an American. They ignore the government. Uh, and I found that same thing uh, from a, a German uh, TV guy who was doing an interview with me, and he was you know 33, 34. He said he was alarmed when he first got there. He was afraid that, you know, because he's German, given the history of Germany and Russia, going back to World War II and then recent comments by German politicians. And he said he was just blown away by how welcoming and kind and generous the Russian people were. So it's not, I'm not trying to suggest that there are not some problems and they don't have some uh, social issues in Russia. But I tell you what. Um, people, if given a choice between living in New York City or living in Moscow, they take Moscow hands down every time. Uh, before uh, we get into uh, specific issues, uh, we have a clip from your least favorite former admiral who does his Baghdad Bob uh, <laughs> imitations yeah. in the press room of the White House. You won't believe what Admiral Kirby had to say about Russia and Russians. We have evolved our support to Ukraine as the war has evolved. Mm -hmm. the, the needs of the Ukrainians on the battlefield have changed, and they are still changing. And we are trying to stay apace with that. That's why we're in constant conversations with them. I would also you know, want to remind uh, people that everything Ukraine is getting is in concert with them and meeting their needs, their asks, and we're trying to, again, stay apace of that. Um, but I think it's also the last thing I'll say, and then I promise I'll end the answer is um, take a look at what Russia has suffered. And the president alluded to some of this in his speech. More than 350,000 casualties, a million young people leaving the country because they don't want to be there anymore. An economy that's basically a war economy and not doing that well. Uh, Russia has suffered a lot at the hands of Ukraine. And because. Does he know what the hell he's talking about? No, he's a moron. I mean, this look. Uh, he, he's back to his Baghdad Bob. Uh, the, the the Russian people and I had a conversation with one fellow who actually had been he had been in the military, and uh, it was out now. And he said he's and he has some American friends of all all things because he had he, he was in he grew up in Texas for a bit in his life. And he pointed out he says 
look, these claims about us suffering all of these casualties, he goes, it's not on social media. And he, and he said, as you can see, because I mean, every Russians, you know, they got a phone, they're doing social media like uh, Americans and, and Canadians and Europeans. He said, you can't hide it. Social media is ubiquitous. People were out there with cameras. They would be taking pictures of the graveyards, of the freshly dug graves, of all the people who have been, you know, maimed, supposedly. Yes, Russia has suffered some casualties, but the general staff, the Stavka, that's, that's running the operation, has been very careful to ensure that the, the Russian troops are not thrown into meat grinder operations. Instead, they are the meat grinder. They're delivering it. So, you know, Kirby, uh, Kirby is the, a typical example of what I call the narcissistic personality disorder that afflicts America. We keep looking in the mirror and telling ourselves, man, you're so good looking. You're so strong. And, and we're, we're a big fat slob. That's what we are. And yet well, we refuse to see what the rest of the world is. While you were uh, flying, I think your, your trip was 28 hours long. While yeah. you were flying home, Jake Sullivan, the uh, president's national security advisor, uh, with a beautiful vista of the Eiffel Tower behind him from a rooftop uh, in Paris, uh, was boasting about how much common sense it makes for President Biden to have authorized Ukrainians to use American weapons to attack inside Russia. He wants them limited to Russian military facilities. Lindsey Graham was saying, no surprise, yeah. that we should be able to attack anything and everything anywhere uh, inside Russia. Question for you, and I'm not going to play Graham because you'll lose your breakfast, but I am going to play Sullivan. Um, question for you. Do you think the American government takes seriously the likely and probable consequences of authorizing the use of American weaponry to t attack inside Russia? No, no, th th that's the problem. They have... Uh, decided that the, the Russia is just an empty, uh, you know, an empty suit, making idle threats. Uh, that uh, Putin's soft and, and and not competent. Boy, you know, when you when you make uh, you make those kinds of stupid assumptions, you're going to you know, put your country in peril. And that's exactly what what Biden and his crew of incompetence are doing. They're putting America in peril because Russia can hurt us, hurt us bad. And there's nothing we can do to stop it if we cross those red lines. Here's uh, Jake Sullivan, uh, Larry, yesterday from a rooftop uh, in Paris, cut number four. From the president's perspective, this was common sense. Um, what was happening up around Kharkiv, which was new just in the last couple of months, was a Russian offensive where they were moving from one side of the border directly to the other side of the border. And it simply didn't make sense not to allow the Ukrainians to fire across that border to hit Russian guns and emplacements that were firing at the Ukrainians. So the president authorized that. The Ukrainians have carried out that authorization on the battlefield. And one thing I will point out is that the momentum of that operation in Kharkiv has stalled out. Now, Kharkiv is still under threat, but the Russians have not been able to make material progress on the ground in recent days in that area. And the United States will continue to support Ukraine in holding the line and pushing back against the aggressing Russian forces. He knows what he's talking about. What military oh, uh, benefit is there to the use of American military equipment to attack Russian early warning systems, early warning of, of nuclear weapons? Yeah, well, one, one of your viewers just in the comments uh, described it aptly. Liar. <laughs> he's a liar across the board. Number one, uh, Ukraine has been firing weapons into Belgorod for more than a year, and they're not targeting military personnel. They're not targeting bases or equipment. They're killing civilians. They're hitting cafes. They're hitting theaters. They're hitting stores. They're hitting schools. They're hitting playgrounds. They're killing civilians. They're not killing soldiers. 
quite a contrast to what the Russians are doing. They're killing soldiers. They're destroying military installations. So, you know, he, he's wrong on that. This, this wishful thinking that, oh, the Russians have stalled out around Kharkiv. Hey, they're not taking Kharkiv. What they're doing is isolating it, and they are s certainly taking the territory that surrounds it because they're, they have compelled the Ukrainians to have to redeploy units that were operating down in uh, Donetsk uh, up north. So now the Ukrainian resources are stretched thin. And in the process of that, the casualties that the Ukrainians are suffering, particularly up around Kharkiv, are enormous. It has is, is almost doubled from what it was uh, three, four months ago. Let's take uh, a step back from the uh, actual conflict in Ukraine and tell us a little bit more about uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, tell us about the St. Petersburg Economic Conference and who you heard and what you gathered about BRICS, about Russian economy, about uh, Russian self-confidence. The, the West has, and I'm talking about the leaders, the leaders in the West are in denial. This conference attracted people from 136 different countries. Uh, it was uh, it was one of the most amazing, um, I guess, conferences, displays I've ever seen. It is this expo center that sits on the outskirts of St. Petersburg by the it's by the airport. It sits up on a hill, so you have this panorama, this vista of Ukraine, the city uh, uh, which is located to uh, the northeast from that uh, perspective. Uh, banks, uh, corporations of different kinds selling different products, uh, everything from one of the uh, most sophisticated watchmakers in the world to robots to AI uh, to uh, uh, then also the discussions about what, what the future of BRICS means. And the, what the West is in denial about is that up until about five years ago, there was no other option. You either had to deal in U.S. dollars or you couldn't deal internationally. If you wanted to be involved with any kind of commerce, you had to bow to the United States. And the thing I kept hearing over and over and over, and when I expressed it in a, in a presentation I met, I, was, <laughs> I got enormous applause. It is people are sick and tired of the United States being a bully. That's all we are. Because our, our options in dealing with other countries is either, if you don't do what we want, we're going to impose sanctions, or we're going to go to war with you, or we're going to launch a, a CIA counter covert out operation, a color revolution to, to undermine and subvert your government. Uh, we don't deal with diplomacy. We don't treat these people with respect. And, what, and that was the message that was coming out of that conference. These people see Russia as treating them with respect, as equals, not as some second or third class citizen, which is why you're now seeing across the Sahel, the middle part of Africa with Chad, Niger, Mali, uh, going over to Sudan. They're tossing out the French and they tossed out the Americans. American uh, uh, troops had to pull other, start pulling their equipment out uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. Uh, you see that in Sudan, they're going to offer a port for the Russians to use. Uh, similarly, there are reports that the Russia is going to be given uh, port privileges up in Libya, uh, in Tobruk. So wh what you're seeing is the rest of the world is looking around, uh, just like Turkey. Turkey's been trying to get into the European Union for 25 years. And all the, all the, the European Union does to the Turks is basically treat them like they're a bunch of field hands from a plantation in the South before the Civil War. No respect. And all of a sudden, Brick shows up in the, in the, and Brick says to the Turks, yeah, come on in. And the Turks are going, wow, hey, they, want, they really like us. And that, that has implications for NATO because once Turkey goes full-blown into uh, Brick's, they're done with NATO and their NATO loses the second largest army. Did you uh, get a chance to hear uh, President Putin or Foreign yeah. Minister Lavrov? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, 
get that was a hot ticket to get into and apparently uh, people had to pay some bucks to do it so we were we were with the cheap crowd so i was sitting there with pepe escobar and uh, uh scott bennett who, who's a, another american that was over there and uh, we were watching it uh, on the screen and uh yeah you know for putin went up and he went he went through in detail how how the domestic economy's doing he's he recognizes that you have got to meet the needs of the Russian people. They have to have some hope for the future. They have to be able to buy what they need for their families. They have to have some financial security. He's all about that. But it was in the question and answer uh, session where he got down to the nitty gritty about uh, foreign policy and dealing with the West and, and the war in Ukraine. And the, the, the United States or the, the Biden administration and most members of Congress are making a real mistake in underestimating the resolve and capability of the Russians. Hey, just, I mean, we, we refuse to deal with even this simple fact. For 15 years, we've been relying upon the Russians to haul our sorry butts to the space station because we can no longer make the rocket engines needed to power the rockets to get us up there. And yet we want to call, we want to treat Russia like it's some backward society that the, you know they're still using outhouses. Please, 